Hey, single plane golfers. You've asked a lot of questions about grip size. Today, I wanna to talk about that bigger may not be better. I'm gonna show you the difference with this water bottle. Hey, thank you for joining me today. By the way, if you're interested in the content that I'm producing here, it's single plane related, it's Mo Norman related, it's natural golf related, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be going through a lot of this stuff and teaching you as much as I can about the greatest swing in the world, Mo Norman single plane swing. Today, I wanna to discuss with you grip size. Now, a lot of you ask questions about should you have a bigger grip or a smaller grip? As you know, when I go through this type of information, I like to give a little bit of data and science behind it. I don't, I'm not trying to overcomplicate this stuff, but I am trying to give you some of the reasoning behind the mechanics and the reason I teach what I teach and why Mo did certain things and the single plane swing works. So I get into some of that and that's the detail I wanna get into because there's a reason behind I, the way I present this stuff to you. Now, bigger grips, are they good or are they not good? Look, everybody has different hand sizes. So I'm gonna tell you right now that at some level you need to get your hands, your grips custom fit on your clubs to fit your hands properly. So my discussion with you today is what is a proper fitting a grip on a golf club and why? Now, I have a number of different clubs here that I'm gonna to present to you. I have my standard type grip. I have an oversized Jumbo Max grip. I have the old Natural Golf non-tapered grip. And I have Mo Norman's club here, which he gave me a number of clubs. That's one of his clubs there with his grip on it. So we're gonna do a little comparison of grip size. But really, let me just talk about what's important with grip size. And as you know, if you're a natural golfer out there, one of the, one of the um, things that happened with natural golf, and a lot of people lost speed, lost club head speed, because of a bigger grip. Now you shouldn't necessarily lose speed with a bigger grip, but if you hold a bigger grip incorrectly uh, in the palm, and we'll talk about that, you're gonna lose speed. I'm gonna show you that today. So today I'm gonna give you some speed back and I'm gonna help you get the right size grip on your golf clubs. Now, let's take a look at this just for a second. I'm gonna grab this water bottle and I wanna show you, well, let me just grab this shaft first. So I'm holding the shaft of this club. Now, a lot of people said, well, you have to have a bigger grip to be in a single plane. It's not true. As you know, if you've seen some of my instruction, a single plane is related to body position. So in other words, if I wanna line this club up aligned with this arm, I have to get in the proper tilt and I can take this shaft, I'm just gonna hold the shaft here and I can get this shaft to line up with my trail arm. So uh, the skinniest thing I can hold here, the shaft, I can easily get it onto a single plane. Not a problem, see that? So grip size is not what's causing a single plane. Body position is doing it, hand rotation is doing it, arm rotation is doing it, it's body positioning. So let's just get that out of the way that it's not grip size that's doing it. But what we have to do here is we have to give you the proper grip size that fits into your hand properly so we can produce leverage and speed and you can hang on to the golf club and produce the right swing mechanics. Now here's where the problem comes in. And I'm gonna grab a couple bigger grips here. The problem comes in when you grab a grip that's too big. So I'm gonna grab this jumbo size grip. Now, this is a jumbo max large grip. And you can see what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna go ahead and grip the shaft of this club, all right? Notice that the shaft, when I grip it with the lead hand, you see how it runs through the fingers through the heel pad of the hand, right? So you would consider that a finger grip, right? Makes sense, fingers are holding it into the hand. I don't have a very good hold on it. It can move around a lot because it's just a shaft, but I can clearly hold that in the fingers of the hand or holding it into this heel pad. That's a correct grip, by the way. There's nothing wrong with that grip other than I, don't, I can't hold the shaft very well. I definitely wouldn't want to try to produce speed because it's moving around in my hand, okay? So there's my grip. Now watch this. I'm gonna move this large Jumbo Max grip into my hand and you'll notice I'm, I'm not changing the axis of the club, but watch what happens now. It starts going into the palm of the hand. Now look, it has completely filled up my hand. Now you're gonna say to me, it's in the palm of the hand. And I'm gonna say, well, yes, because the grip is so large, the grip is now in the palm of my hand, but look at the axis of the shaft, it hasn't changed. The axis is still going through this part of my hand, except now it's able to fill the hand up. See that? 
it's now filling the hand up. So this whole concept of palm grip gets a little bit fuzzy because palm grip is related to the size of the grip. Now here's where you run into some serious problems when you have grip size issues. Watch this. So if I take this axis of this shaft, and by the way, let me just step back for a second. Why do I want, why do I want this shaft in this axis? Because this is what forms the leverage angle at the top. See that? It forms this nice, this is where I can produce speed, this, this hinge of my hand. So I want this, the hand, the club axis to be through that part of my hand to produce this leverage angle. And I can do the same thing with the jumbo grip, right? I can do the same thing. Okay, so this axis is very important. But here's where you run into a big problem, is when the axis of the shaft gets too high into the hand. See that? I just took that shaft. Here's what you get. Now you lose leverage. See, I can't, I can't form a leverage angle with my wrist hinge. It actually hurts my arm to do this. So this is the problem that people had, is they would grab grips that were too big, it would ca cause the axis of the shaft to go too high into the hand, and they wouldn't form leverage. Now let me show you another big problem with grips that are too big, and that goes to the face-on angle. Now, I'm gonna grab this water bottle and you're gonna see what happens here. So obviously, same problem here, same thing. I would grab a water bottle and you would say, oh, Todd, look, the shaft axis is still the same, but your, your grip is still, you know, you still have it in the proper axis, but now you filled the hand up so it's in the palm. But watch this, I'm gonna go to a face-on view. This is where you have the biggest absolute problem with grips that are too big. See the shaft, it's on this side of my arm. Now, for me to, to put force into a golf shaft, gaff, just through a normal golf swing, I put force on a golf shaft. And I say normal golf swing, proper movement of the arm, proper hinging of the wrist, proper unhinging of the wrist. I, but I can't do it if the shaft is not underneath that radius bone. This is the radius bone of your arm right there. And I have to be able to have that, the hand on top of that to produce force in the shaft. And when the club, when the grip gets so big that my hand, in order to get the hand aligned with the face, that the shaft axis is on this side of my arm, I got a, it's a weak, weak problem. I got a very weak hand position. Now, what people do is they go, oh, I'm in a weak position. They put their hand in a rotation on top of the club. Look, it just put the, put the radius bone on top of the shaft. Now, I can produce leverage on this shaft now, but I changed my relationship of my hand rotation to the face. So what I get, if the grip gets too big, and by the way, this one's too big for my hands, this Jumbo, Jumbo Max Large. So this one, notice when I grip this club, it doesn't form the proper axis on my arm, and I don't produce enough angle at the top. I lose speed because of this. Too big a grip for my hand size loses leverage angle because of that problem right there. The shaft is running too much on this side of the radius bone. And if I try to do this, if I try to go, okay, just grab it stronger to get in the radius bone, I get that. I get a closed club face. So I either hit it weak and to the right, or I hit it left. See what's going on here? This is where grip size gets to be kind of tricky. So let me go back to this. This was a natural golf grip. Now, natural golf grip is obviously smaller than a Jumbo Max Large. It's actually a lot smaller. So for me, the natural golf grips weren't that, they, they weren't that bad. Because look, I can grab it right in the proper axis. I can get the, the handle underneath the radius bone, no problem getting the face on plane, and no problem producing leverage. But here's why natural golfers lost speed. Because they took this grip, and look, it's not, it's not in the palm of my hand. See that? That grip is in that same axis we were talking about through the finger to the uh, heel pad area. See that? Here's where natural golfers went wrong. They took this grip and put it in the palm. And like I talked about before, it took the axis of the shaft and ran it too high through the hand. And now look what I have from that face on view. And now look what I have at the top. I don't have leverage angle. So palm grip, that's why I don't like the term palm grip because palm grip means that you filled the hand up with something. It didn't really tell you anything. What matters is axis of the shaft relative to the grip size. And that's why this grip doesn't bother me at all because I can grip it in the right spot and I can get the proper 
shaft line there. Now it's a, it feels different, it's a little large, but there's no reason that I can't hit great golf shots with this natural golf club because I can get it into a single plane and I can easily hit a golf ball. Okay, so not hard to do with this club for me. I don't love it, it's a little large for me, I don't, it doesn't feel as good. There might be a weighting problem, it's a heavy grip, so that's another issue, but as far as size, I didn't mind it too much. This Jumbo Max grip, I, hit, I cannot seem to compress the ball well with it. I have a hard time getting it. This one's too large. Now the Jumbo Max Medium is a little better for me. Um, so I don't mind a big grip as long as I can get it in the proper shaft axis and the proper axis this direction, not a problem. But this one's a little too big for me. This is Moe's grip. All right, so this is Moe's grip. Now look, this is the Natura Golf grip, and then there's Moe's grip. The Moe's grip is smaller than the Natura Golf grip. So people were talking about Moe had bigger grips. This thing is a little bigger than a, a standard grip, which is right, right here. I'll show you the standard size. This is a standard size grip, so obviously it's a tiny bit bigger than that. But once again, I'll just show you that Moe's grip is very easy because it's not huge for me to grab it in the proper axis here and proper alignment here and proper leverage there. See that leverage angle? That nice leverage angle formed. Now let me show you one more demonstration uh, to show you why natural golfers lost speed. Now this is kind of an interesting way to look at this. So if I take this natural golf grip, right, and I move it too high into the hand. So we, we just talked about this, the axis of the shaft is too high into the hand. And I, I take that to the top of my backswing, right? So look at the, I've lack, I lack leverage angle. What I'm gonna do though, is see what I'm gonna do? If I wanted to grip this correctly, I would move this down into my heel pad, right? Okay, so that gives me the proper shaft axis through this hand and the proper under the radius bone position. Well, I'm gonna do that at the top of my backswing. So watch this. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put it in the, in the incorrect position. I'm gonna go to the top, right? I'm lacking angle. Watch when I move the club into the proper part of the hand. You see, my, you see me get leverage angle? So immediately, I go from palm grip to proper positioning and I get leverage. So I'm just explaining to you, if you were one of those natural golf guys that said, oh, you lose speed with natural golf, you simply were incorrectly gripping the golf club because you shouldn't have been gripping it in the palm of the lead hand. All right, so that's the, that kind of covers this whole grip thing. I hope that helps you out because watch what happens at the top of the swing. If I go from here, right, here's as much, much angle as I can get. Watch how far the club moves in the position in the back swing, see that? It's moving a couple feet. So just think about when the club's moving two feet in the same amount of time, that's where speed comes from. So speed is produced because of proper hand action, right? Leverage, lag, and hand action, which gives the club velocity. And if you don't have that, you lose speed. So if you're one of those natural golf guys and you still like the bigger grips, just make sure it's not too high in the hand and it's down into the fingers more so the shaft axis is running through this part of the hand, this heel pad part of the hand. Now, Mo Norman, let's talk about 10 finger versus overlap. When you take a look at Mo's grip and you see it face on, a lot of the later stuff from 1994, Mo was in a 10 finger position. So to, what do I recommend? I actually recommend an overlapping position. That's how Mo played when he was younger. All his course records were sent with overlapping. If you look at some of the older video of Mo, and you can see some video here, Mo was using an overlapping hand position. So you have this debate going on, 10 finger, baseball grip, overlap. Here's what I'm gonna, I'm just gonna give you some recommendation on grip size, and I'm gonna grab Mo's club and show you this. It comes down once again to getting the club properly placed into the hands. Once again, does the lead arm collect, correctly place it in line with that radius bone so I can produce some leverage on the shaft? Does the shaft run through the heel pad? That allows me to get the club to leverage properly and in, be in the proper face rotation with the hand. Now, how you place a trail hand overlap 10 finger? Well, there's some things we gotta talk about. Number one is, what, what matters to me mostly is the rotation of the hand, and that's from the body position. So now I can grip it in a single plane. Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go from a overlapping position to 10 finger, and you don't even hardly see a change. See that? You, don't, you see a tiny bit of movement down, 
but my rotation of my hand is not changing. I'll do it this way. Watch this. Overlapping, 10 finger. Overlapping, 10 finger. So is there a big difference in those two? Well, you're shortening the lever length of the club a little bit, but there's not a huge difference in those two grips. Here's what happens though, and this is where I have a problem with 10 finger. What people do is they go like this. They grab it in the palm of the hand like this. They once again, they move the axis of the shaft too close to the trail arm. Now, once again, loss of speed. If I move the shaft close to this arm, loss of speed. So you had two really bad things going on with natural golf. You had people gripping it in the palm of the lead hand and bringing the axis too close to the arm of the trail hand, and here you go, no leverage in the club. It's exactly opposite of what Mo did. Here's what Mo did. He gripped it correctly in the lead hand. Overlapping or 10 finger didn't matter to Mo because he didn't move the shaft close to the arm. He had it still with, with in a position where it was all about hand rotation. And then he could leverage the club at the top. He was in this position, not this position. That's the whole thing discussion. Now you're going to hear Mo talk palm grip. And I'll tell you a quick story as I wrap up the video today. So. It was funny because Mo, we were going to get a, a casting mold made of Mo's hands. And I have this casting of Mo's hands where we put our hands into a bucket. And you, know, you dip your hands in the solvent and then you wait about 10 minutes and the solvent forms and you pull your hands out. And then you pour the mold casting there. Well, I, I had to basically coerce Mo to do this. Get your hands in the bucket, Mo, and sit there. Well, he finally did it. And Mo put his hands in the bucket like this. Stuck his hands in the bucket, just like that. And it, it actually is not even close to actually hit a golf ball, because when you watch him hit a golf ball, he's like this. So, so Mo reaches his hand in the bucket, and he goes, here you go. And he just did it to make me happy. Now, they're beautiful hands because they're his hands, but it's nowhere near where he actually held a golf club. You got to be a little bit, if you were there, you understand this stuff. A lot of stuff that Mo said and did, he'll tell you palm grip, but you need to look and investigate what really is going on when he strikes a golf ball. And you'll see that he wasn't in the palms of the hands. It was more about body position and arm rotations. And that's the beauty of Mo's swing. If you truly understand it, you can produce leverage and speed. You won't lose any speed. And that's kind of my solution today for you, especially if you're one of those guys that wants to discuss the difference between natural golf and what we teach now in Mo Norman's single plane swing.